Hey everyone, JP here and welcome to another episode of Project Gaia Travel. So today we are in Alexandria, Virginia. Now Alexandria, Virginia is a small city real close to Washington DC. Now it's one of the best day trips from Washington DC. Uh, you can take the metro here, there's a metro stop. It's about a 30 minute train ride from center DC and about a 15 minute walk to the old city area. Now, what's so great about Alexandria? So Alexandria is one of the most historic districts in the United States, right? So when you go around here, you're going to see some of the oldest architecture in the country. So you're gonna see a lot of like brownstones and row houses from the 18th century and 19th century, right? And also, big interesting fact about here is this is George Washington's town basically right so George Washington's manor is Mount Vernon which is a couple miles south of here right but it's a plantation and it's in more of a rural setting but this would be his town right so this is kind of the neighborhood that George Washington would come to come to town right so we're gonna go through here there are amazing sights to see and history lovers are going to love Alexandria. It has a lot of things to see and we're going to explore all of them on this tour. So without further ado, let's begin. Alexandria's historic district offers you the opportunity to really step back in time. The city has one of the largest historic districts in the country and is filled with impressive 18th and 19th century row houses and small homes. Take a walk along the same streets as George Washington and other founding fathers as you peruse the quaint and attractive streets. History is around every corner, like here at Duval's Tavern where George Washington's victory was celebrated by the gentlemen of Alexandria after his return home from the Revolutionary War. The first place I recommend you check out is the Alexandria History Museum at the Lyceum, which is behind me. Now, the Lyceum has been a center of intellectual pursuit since the 1830s, right? So this building was built in 1839, and it's gone through several different hands since then. Uh, but since 1985, it has been the home of the city's history museum. And why I recommend you go here first is because it really helps you get acquainted with Alexandria's rich heritage and past, right? So you go inside, you learn about the history, then you step out, and you can experience more as you explore throughout your day. So let's head in. The Alexandria History Museum is a good starting point for your adventure in the city. The museum is small and could be done in less than an hour, and it offers you the opportunity to really learn more about Alexandria from the pre-colonial period through the colonial period and revolution to the Civil War era to the Civil Rights Movement up until today. Understanding the history makes you more acquainted with the other sites that you will see throughout your visit. Learn all about how the city was occupied by the Northern Army during the Civil War, being somewhat held hostage because of its close proximity to the northern border and its strategic port. Next, check out the Torpedo Factory. This large warehouse used to be the home of the Navy's manufacturer of torpedoes. There are small remains throughout the building that display this history, but in the 1970s the Torpedo Factory warehouse was turned into a full-blown art gallery. The building offers three floors of space where you can check out works of art in many different mediums by various local artists. You can see their work and most of the unique pieces are for sale, so if you see something you like, you can bring it home. 
Even if you're not too interested in art or looking to buy anything, a walk through the various floors of the Torpedo Factory Art Center is sure to captivate your senses. The Torpedo Factory is also the home of the Alexandria Archaeological Museum. Here you can see artifacts that were found all throughout Alexandria's historic district from the colonial era and earlier. These artifacts allow us to better understand the past and the lifestyles of the people by studying the various items left behind. If you happen to be in Alexandria on a Saturday morning, make sure you check out the Alexandria Farmer's Market. This market sells everything from fruits and vegetables to meat, poultry, and hot food. It also sells various goods and condiments from farmers all across the region. It is a fantastic place to people watch and really brings the local Alexandria community together along with tourists. One of the best things to do in Alexandria is simply walk. Wander through the city's quaint streets and marvel at the beautiful architecture all around you. You can get lost in the various blocks, and I recommend you do so. Next, check out the Alexandria Black History Museum. The museum focuses on the history of African Americans in the city and is interestingly housed in the building that was the segregated black-only library during the separate but equal era in the American South. The museum is small but worth a visit and helps you understand the accomplishments of black Americans in Alexandria throughout the past and in recent years. Next, take a look at the boyhood home of Robert E. Lee. This is a private residence now, not a museum, so it's not open to the public. However, it's definitely something interesting to take a look at. The home was built in 1795 and has a long history belonging to the Lee family. Across the street, check out the Lee Fendel House. This home was once the residence of several prominent Alexandria families, including Robert E. Lee's family. When you enter the museum, you are actually transported back in time as you explore its beautifully restored rooms, complete with original 19th century furnishings. Make sure you check out the kids' room to see this old bassinet and this impressive and original 19th century dollhouse. After you finish exploring the house, make sure you check out the gardens in the rear of the property. The meticulously maintained flora offer you the opportunity for some peace and solidarity before you continue your adventure through Alexandria.
Okay, one site you definitely have to check out when you're here in Alexandria is Christ Church, which is behind me. So, what's special about Christ Church? Well, this is a very old church here in Alexandria. It was built in the late 18th century. It has an incredible history, and this is the church that George Washington, yes, the first president of the United States, uh, attended. He actually had a pew here at Christ Church. Like I said before, uh, Alexandria is kind of like his stomping grounds, right? So he would go to church here, even though he lived in Mount Vernon, a couple miles south of here. Um, also, uh, later throughout the centuries, uh, Robert E. Lee had a pew and went to church here as well. So um, go through the church. It's pretty plain um, and pretty uh, reminiscent of early colonial churches, um, but it really is interesting and something to see while you're here in Alexandria. So let's head in. Christ Church was built in 1773 and was George Washington and Robert E. Lee's local church. It is an exemplary example of Georgian architecture with its elegant white facade and interior. It has pew booths that the patrons would rent, a design that is common in colonial Protestant churches. You can even sit in George Washington or Robert E. Lee's family pew. The church is still active and has weekly masses on Sunday. After you explore the church and sit in Washington's pew, check out the adjacent cemetery. This historic burying ground is the final resting place of several prominent 18th and 19th century Alexandrians, and you can see several historic graves. There are still some open grave sites, and you can see some more recent graves as well. One thing that you have to do when you're here in Alexandria is see Gadsby's Tavern, which is behind me. Now, this tavern was built in the 1780s to 1790s and what's so interesting about it is you get to go inside the museum and you get to see how a tavern functioned in the late 18th century so why is that interesting well a tavern essentially is like a bar right so it's somewhere where people ate drank and you know they discussed politics they discussed new ideas and it really was an important place, the tavern, in early American history. And what's interesting too is taverns used to, in the old days, require that there were sleeping quarters on the top. So you can actually see how people who stayed at the tavern would sleep, right? So maybe you had a couple too many drinks or maybe you're passing through and then you would stay at the tavern, kind of like a hotel. So it was kind of like the two for one. You'd have, you know, your bar and your restaurant downstairs and then you'd have your hotel upstairs. But as you will see, it's not really to our standard. So without further ado, let's head in. Gadsby's Tavern, built in the 1780s to 1790s, offers you a look into tavern life in the late 18th century. The tavern was an important gathering place for people in the community and served as a home for hospitality. In the tavern, as today, you can get fed, drink, and socialize. But taverns used to also offer accommodation. In Gadsby's Tavern, you can see what kind of accommodations people would stay at after having a little bit too much to drink, having a visit from a lady of the night, or while passing through. Check out this higher end bedchamber. This was like the executive suite of the tavern with only very wealthy patrons utilizing the space. It came complete with two large and private comfortable beds. Right after this, check out the ballroom. This was like the catering hall of the tavern and was used mostly for special and larger events. Check out the most basic accommodations in the attic level. These were simple beds above the dining and drinking area, often filled with multiple strangers. Think of it like a European hostel today. Bed bugs and vermin were common and they weren't the most comfortable places to sleep.
Now, one thing that I notice when you're walking around Alexandria is the city is a perfect grid. Now, this isn't very common for pre-colonial cities. So, most colonial cities um, have an organic design, kind of like like a European almost design, right? Like a like a London, right? Um, Boston's like this. Lower Manhattan is like this. It's not a perfect grid. Uh, interestingly, though, this is. So it's very easy to navigate. I mean, everything's a square and everything's perfectly perpendicular. So that kind of makes it um, easy to get around while you're here in Alexandria. Another thing is it's incredibly walkable. So when you're going to these sites, I wouldn't drive because it's just going to take you longer to like find a spot and all of that. And it gets very busy. You know, besides the historical stuff, this is a major center uh, for shopping and dining. So you're not going to really want to drive between all these sites. You're going to want to walk it. And it's very compact. All of these things are like less than a mile apart. And most are like just a couple blocks apart. So definitely uh, take that into consideration uh, when you're navigating through all of these places. When in Alexandria, you have to check out the Stabler Leadbeater Apothecary. This old world pharmacy and general store was founded in 1792 and is almost perfectly original and preserved. In the museum, you can check out the original storefront with all of the interesting and some outdated, some not, methods of healing various ailments. It is very interesting to see how pharmacology has evolved over the years with early pharmacies and medicinal methods looking just like this. My favorite thing to see was the original bloodletting devices and the poison bottles. Now, after you've done your big history lesson, and you've done all your touring and gone to all the museums and everything, you're probably gonna be hungry. I'm sure you've worked up an appetite. So where you're going to wanna go is King Street. Now, King Street is the main commercial corridor here in Alexandria. So it runs along the entire length of the city and it is filled with bars, restaurants, nightlife, uh, tons of little stores, and it really is the hub of Alexandria. So we're gonna go through this a little bit, explore it a little bit, uh, see some of the bars, restaurants, stores, and then we're gonna walk all the way down and it ends at the waterfront, which is beautiful. So let's start. King Street is sure to impress you with its big variety of stores, boutiques, restaurants, pubs, and bars. The street serves as the spine of Alexandria and is the main commercial corridor. The street stretches for several miles, but the main section is at the eastern end towards the waterfront. The street not only offers you a lively dining and drinking destination, but is also a fantastic place for people watching live music and street performers. If you're not a huge history buff, you can leave the rest of your group to explore the historical sites and just hang out here with a drink or two or three. Predictably, weekend, late afternoons, and early evenings are the liveliest, and the area is a true testament of a lively and functional urban space. The next thing you want to see in Alexandria is the Alexandria waterfront. That's where we are now. Now, Alexandria has a fantastic waterfront located right on the Potomac River. So how you get here is you just follow King Street eastbound all the way till when it ends really, right? And then there's basically a promenade and it's filled with people just sunbathing, hanging out in the park, by the river. 
um, there's more restaurants and bars around here. So definitely take a look at this, especially if you're here on a weekend afternoon, because it really is a beautiful urban space. Alexandria's waterfront is a lively urban space at the eastern terminus of King Street. The waterfront stretches along the Potomac River and is filled with public art, restaurants, street performers, water adventures, and more. It is an excellent place to relax after exploring the city or a good end to a pub crawl on King Street. The next place you have to check out is Captain's Row or Prince Street. This is often considered the most beautiful block in Alexandria and you can see why it has this reputation. The street is filled with attractive 18th and 19th century row houses and used to be a popular place for captains and their families to call home. It is now the most Instagrammable place in the city and is a popular spot for photo shoots and wedding photography. The Hollandsbury Spite House, or the skinniest house in America, should be next on your list. This house was built in 1830 and is a mere 7.5 feet in width. It has a colorful history, is now a private residence, and is a popular photo spot for visitors. Okay guys, that was Alexandria, Virginia. I had a fantastic time showing it. And what I really love about Alexandria is just the beautiful architecture, the historic nature of it all. You know, you really feel like you're stepping back in time. And it really makes for an amazing getaway from Washington DC, or even if you're just traveling along the East Coast in general, it's a fantastic place to stop. And it has an amazing urban space. I mean, you saw it, all the restaurants, all the bars, all the stores, the park. You know, it really is a fantastic place to visit. And I really recommend you come here when you're in the area. Guys, listen, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like this video, share this video with your friends and family, and uh, leave me your comments below. Let me know if there's anything I missed or if you have any recommendations for other travelers when they're traveling here through Alexandria, Virginia. Okay, guys, until next time, take care. Bye.